and we are live. Awesome. All right, well, let's start the meeting with 1.1, the roll call. Crouch. Um, present from Clinton County. Frank Kupfer. Present, Shiawassee County. Quinn. Uh, I am here, I am in East Lansing, also in Clinton County. In Yonkis. Here in East Lansing, Ingham County. And I am also here as staff, Amy Schlesler Schmidt in East Lansing, Michigan and Ingham County. And I think Gabby's gonna join us in just a couple minutes. So you have a quorum, Madam Chair. Awesome, 1.2 approval of the agenda. Do you have any changes? I have no changes to the agenda. All right, I'll motion to approve the agenda. I will second that, Quinn. All right, and I will do a roll call vote. This is for approval of the agenda. Crouch. Yes. Frank Hepfer. Yes. Quinn. Yes. Yonkis. Yes. The motion passes. Great. Do we have any written communication? We do not have any written communications today. Okay. Public comments, the consideration to limit it to two minutes per individual. So as committee members are very much aware at this point, uh, we are obviously uh, still taking precautionary measures during COVID-19. And it is the recommendation of the city attorney's office that we just limit public comment um, in order to be respectful of everyone's time on a virtual platform. So if um, individuals agree, then the motion would be to adopt a rule limiting public comment to two minutes per individual. All right, I will motion to approve that. I'll second. All right, and I will do a roll call vote. And I think, yes, Mr. Houston and Ms. Vizicaro just joined us. So I will add them to our list. Okay, and again, um, this is just a little public comment to two minutes per individual. Crouch. Yes. Frank Hepfer. Yes. Quinn. Yes. Yonkis. Yes. Houston. Yes. And Mr. Houston, for the record, could you just share where you're logging in from today? I'm logging in from East Lansing, Michigan. Perfect. And Ms. Vizacaro, can you just share where you're logging in from today? Yep, I'm tuned in from East Lansing. Great. Michigan. Thank you very much. Okay, and Madam Chair, I do not see that we have anyone that's called in today. Okay. You well, can still formally. Right, so I do not see any communications from the audience. Perfect, then we can close it. 2.4. Communications from staff. Okay all, so I just kind of wanted to provide a couple of brief updates, um, particularly about the daytime, nighttime, anytime uh, project that's been going on that I think has been some, uh, there's really led to some pretty positive things in the downtown. So first of all, as a quick reminder for anybody that's watching and for all of you that are joining us, the East Lansing Underground Market is this Sunday again um, from 10 to 2. We encourage all that are able to go down and check it out. Um, there are some great vendors and you can look on our webpage and see, you know, all of the offerings that are going to happen. So we really encourage that. Um, we still also have the pop-up art exhibits that are going on in the downtown. So that's a lot of fun. Um, so people should visit, you know, the 19 uh, various business host locations that are happening. Show your pot of gold, basically your favorite East Lansing uh, business location is our TikTok that's currently taking place. So we encourage people to check out the downtown East Lansing TikTok page and go and visit some various uh, locations. You will see a couple of, you know, guest stars in the video and things like that. So feel free to, to, to check that out. And we hope that people will, uh, you know, submit submit things in that. And then the Rotary um, Club, I know that a lot of people have been watching that, but our Weekend Warriors have had a lot of different locations that have been happening. Um, so that's great news as well. Uh, the other sort of just general economic development uh, thing that I wanted to kind of share is that just a little bit ago, staff sent out an email and posted on social media about a roundtable event that's specific to restaurants that is going to be taking place on the 31st with Senator Gary Peters' office. And we just encourage um, any restaurant um, representatives to consider attending that. Um, it is a, 
you know, to have them consider applying for some grant funds that could certainly be beneficial at this time. So I just kind of wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. Um, so those are my major announcements and I'm happy to answer any questions anyone might have at this time. I talked to anybody got anything, nothing? No. Sounds good. All right, All right. point five. Does anybody have anything that they want to share that's not on the agenda as a committee member? Any goals, any ideas? Nothing. Okay. I guess we can move on then. 3.1, the treasurer's report. Okay. Everyone's favorite update, I am sure. So um, I'm just gonna kind of go to uh, the second page right now. So certainly you have just your general monthly, you know, direct work order salaries and benefits that support staff time. Um, as well as the computer rental. We did pay the $29 for the March call loop. So again, that is, um, you know, the uh, basically the text messaging system that we maintain so that we can send out any updates regarding construction or really any just general city updates that might be necessary to share with the general public. Um, and then as a reminder, this group had just asked that we reflect that we might consider an art festival sponsorship. Um, and so that discussion is gonna be held in May. So not a lot of activity, um, but it is only the, you know, uh, we have a couple more days left in the month. So certainly there might be a couple of additional charges before we meet again for your April board meeting. Um, it, as it stands to date, and you guys have kind of heard me say this over and over, I guess, for the last couple of months, just because we're not spending as much money. Um, we do have uh, uh, around $5,000 remaining that we could spend in, in operating costs. Um, I did, uh, as we're talking about budget, want to just kind of share one thing. So as you might recall, during one of the prior board meetings, this group had approved um, an expenditure of the purchase of additional yard signs. We have not yet made that purchase because we have some yard signs remaining. And so um, last Sunday was the first Sunday that I personally went, two Sundays ago, I apologize, it was the first Sunday that we tried to sell um, the yard signs. We sold a couple but that's not much, right? So we've tried to do a little more promotion on social media. So Gabby's gonna go out this Sunday and see how that goes. Um, we did go with the recommended um, uh, you know, donation of $15, but certainly we would accept less if, if people were willing. So just kind of wanted to share that with you. Our hope is that our thought process was that we wouldn't purchase more right until we sell out of the existing ones. So I just kind of wanted to, to, to share that. So there could be an additional you know, up to thousand dollar expenditure. Um, which we can reflect on the treasurer's report for the next month just to show you, but that is not something that has yet occurred. Um, Good question. Yes. Um, about the yard sign purchases, is there a way that we can start advertising that like on social media is the only place that people can purchase and pick up on Sunday at the, at the market? Fair. Yeah. Market. Or yes. like, okay. In fact, um, so that's what we're saying. Like, that's what our most recent post that Marissa did a little bit this morning was kind of like, hey, come check us out. Like, come to the market, you know, consider making a donation. Um, I can also tell you that Adam and I have been uh, talking a lot about, and it is not yet finalized, but we've been talking a lot about maybe having the possibility that people could purchase them on our app. And then we would figure out a way for them to either, you know, pick them up at the cadet desk, for example, and have that be safe social distancing, or perhaps, depending on the number, perhaps staff might be able to, you know, just deliver them to somebody's. You know, okay, yeah, that's what I was wondering, like, if we started advertising more, like, in the neighborhood groups or things like that, if you want to purchase, do we have to tell them that they have to go to the market, or is there another way that they could purchase? Oh, I see, like a reminder, that's actually a great idea, Chanel. I, we can send that out. Yeah, I can absolutely send that out to the neighborhood groups and just as like a reminder, because we've been primarily doing social media. Yeah. Um, we only tried it one Sunday, so I want to use that caveat. I did wonder, you know, do we think, so the yard size is a little more than $8 for our personal expenditure, but we've already sort of outlaid that cost, right? So big picture, anything we receive is additional revenue. Um, you know, if we lowered the, the suggested donation to $10, it wouldn't be a lot, but I don't know if we think that that lower price point might inspire more sale. I don't have a problem lowering it. In the end, the idea is to get them out there and have potential fundraising. And it's always what 
like what we said is it's a suggested donation. So you can give us $10, you can give us $5, you can give us $50, like, you know, yeah. whatever somebody wants to do to support the businesses. I don't have a problem lowering it to 10 if that incentivizes more people to get them and then they get more in people's yards. Um, okay. Well, maybe we'll change the signage to say 10 and just see. It say on it suggested donation. Okay. It says suggested donation $15. That's what we had at the market last two Sundays ago. So the most recent market, which was two Sundays ago. So we could just change that and see if it. How much traffic have the markets been getting? Have you guys been like tracking? Um, I believe the last market had a, uh, just under, it was around 500 individuals. Okay. Um, I was also told that, so I don't have specific numbers for you, but I was also told that that was a little bit of a slower market than prior markets. And it was also the first day after daylight savings time. So we kind of felt like that might have affected people's And it's behavior. getting spring breaks and things like that. Yes. Um, I would also assume that as it gets warmer, more people will attend the markets. Therefore, we could set up like a space outside. So it's not like, because the, is, is the vision for the market in the summer going to expand up onto the sidewalk, like outside of the Marriott, or is it going to stay in the parking garage? So currently the structure of the market per the, the program proposal is that the market will end Mother's Day weekend. Okay. That market will end. But we have- a Then everybody shifts into like the traditionally sensing farmer's market that people are used to at Bailey Court Park. Okay. But so we can transition to that if we wanted to- I'm sure we could discuss that. Yeah. Especially if, you know, we have staff capacity and or our volunteer board wants to hang out with us some weekends. Yeah. Sure. We can have a discussion about that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so we'll try that then. If if I'm hearing consensus that that's okay, we'll try it. We'll change some of the signage to say suggest a donation of ten dollars and see see if that just goes. Is the city has there been discussion about restarting the mask table ambassador table? I, I have not been privy. Yeah, I have not been privy to those discussions, but I I am happy to ask. I okay, because that would be another thing if they were going to do some sort of like table, like whatever, how they were doing in the fall and people are already going to be there staffed for it. That could be another mm -hmm. avenue. For that too. Okay. okay. So that's sort of, you know, monthly financial picture for everyone. Anybody have any additional questions about that? Okay. I'm all set. Right. So more long-term planning. Um, I know that I gave a brief presentation at the board meeting um, previously this month, but um, as a reminder, so for the fiscal year 22 budget, right now we put together a very conservative budget. Um, and I know that I talked with all of you about the fact that, you know, we, we do that intentionally with the hope that additional revenues come in and then, you know, that makes finance happy and that makes, you know, us able to do more, um, more activities. So um, as it stands with the special assessment state rates staying the same, which we're going to talk about in a minute, um, the special assessment will essentially come in at $44,405. It comes in about 407, but we rounded the nearest five for financial budget purposes. We assume, um, you know, miscellaneous, miscellaneous advertising revenues of about $5,000. That is normally through partnerships with the DDA. Again, that number is probably could, could increase if we come up with some good project proposals and partnership ideas with them. And then the $5,000 that we receive annually from uh, the parking division. So that essentially gives us a budget in revenues of $54,555. And you can see that, you know, then I, um, you know, we presented to you what that would mean from a work, you know, salaries, benefits perspective, as well as contract services and marketing advertising. Um, you know, there is about $250 that we spend on membership fees, you know, it's an $1,800 computer charge. Um, but for the most part, you know, the chunk of our operating is really spent on events and then you know marketing and business relations improvements. So the, the brief discussion I was hoping to have today was to just sort of see, so this is the budget to date, if you will. So this is the fiscal year 21 budget. I just didn't know if this group felt strongly about adding anything to it for the fiscal year 22 budget. 
Um, we again, we can certainly amend things, but you know, as it stands to date, you know, we've kind of factored in and assumed that we we would still probably do like some sort of winter glow joint event if hopefully by next Christmas things are a little back to normal so we can do some sort of holiday celebration. Um, the summer concert series premiere, I have budgeted that, but I know that we are still finalizing from a communications perspective whether or not we will actually be doing that. So that might open up, you know, a couple of thousand dollars for the DMB if that does not proceed. I can tell you that I've talked to communication staff and that they have said that the earliest the city is prepared to really do in-person events like a movie night or, you know, concerts outside would be July. So it's definitely going to be next fiscal year. And obviously we're just going to abide by COVID restrictions. Um, certainly the hope is that by June of 2022, the jazz festival would, would proceed and hopefully, you know, the science the MSU Science Festival the uh, one month prior in May would, would, would occur. Um, we spent about $12,000 on holiday decorations. So that was for installation and the additional purchase of decorations. Staff is assuming we'll, we'll um, purchase about that much one, one more time because we still have that length of Albert Avenue that we need to do actually outside of Sundance. <laughs> that length needs to be further decorated with garland and, and red bows. So we are assuming that. Um, unless obviously you guys indicate otherwise. And then obviously, you know, just general like contract vendors. So if we sometimes hire like a chalk artist or a street musician or a face painter or anything like that, um, we could certainly, you know, discuss that. Um, I don't know if, if you saw, but the GLCBB did unfortunately officially cancel the Be a Tourist in Your Own Town for this year with every indication to try to do that next year. So, it does feel like a lot of, you know, popular community events have certainly been canceled through June. And I think that we're all just kind of waiting to see what happens in July. So um, I wanted to, you know, just kind of go into a little more detail with you about this, see if, you know, this committee had specific directive for staff, if you would like us to look into anything further, if, you know, there's a particular type of event or a different type of partnership you'd like us to research to kind of narrow it in. Um, specifically, but, you know, all told, we're kind of looking at a budget of about $15,490 in sort of events management, sponsorship, sort of what I deem sort of business relations committee's umbrella of assignment, if you will. So, are there any thoughts about that? And it's fine if the answer is, let's just keep it general and let's start here and let's see what happens. That's perfectly fine too, but we just wanted to provide an opportunity to dialogue about it. Does anybody have any opinions? Okay, well, um, I don't, I feel like being more flexible is always better um, when we don't know exactly how things are gonna go. It's normally, in a normal year, I'd say we could it make more sense to make decisions, but I think right now, I think keeping it flexible is probably the smartest decision. Okay. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say, I, I think that seems to be kind of the right moment to stay flexible, so. Okay, well, that's what we'll do. So finance has this initial draft. Um, I will certainly continue to update you, you know, as we move along. Um, on any updates that there might be. Um, usually there's not, you know, a lot of changes. Um, and just so you kind of understand big picture budget, um, what happens is finance will present, you know, the initial budget document to city council that includes our DMB budget um, at the beginning of April. And then specific budget work sessions and budget meetings and budget public hearings then occur, you know, middle of April through May. The official city sensing budget is scheduled to be approved by the third week of May as it stands right now. So there is some time to obviously edit if we feel if we feel that that's necessary. So okay. All right. Okay. So I guess kind of in the same token then, since it all sort of jives together, I wanted to discuss um, more about the renewal of the downtown management board special assessment. So during the March board meeting, it was kind of deferred to both subcommittees to kind of hone in and see if there were any particular requests. Um, 
you know, I wrote a very detailed memo. I don't know if folks had kind of an opportunity to read this very, very clearly, but um, essentially, you know, through the collection of the special assessment, the downtown management board is able to do, you know, all of the operations that it does. So, you know, supportive events that attract people into the downtown, you know, undergo marketing techniques, they, you know, such as print media, social media, things of that nature. Um, we've updated signage in the near future. We've done rebranding with, you know, the, the daytime, nighttime, anytime logo that I think is really, you know, become really prominent most recently with, with um, the placemaking project and things of that nature. Um, as it stands, at least at the most recent board meeting, I think that a lot of the, the consensus was to leave the special assessment at the same rate. So we would not increase that certainly given COVID. So it's a very moderate assessment. Um, essentially, businesses would be charged eight cents per square foot if you know if they have office space or retail space on the first floor, five cents per square foot on the second floor, basement is four cents per square foot, and then three cents for all other locations. There is also like a particular cap. So if you have you know um, over a certain um, amount of square footage, then you know that total dollar amount is capped. We, as you guys might recall, so last year, the DMB decided to keep the special assessment at the same rate, certainly due to COVID for one year. And now I think the discussion is, or it was suggested that maybe we renew it for two years this time to kind of allow for some economic, you know, recovery, if you will. Um, but that will be a final decision of the board. So if this subcommittee feels like, you know, maybe two years isn't enough, we wanna look at three years, or maybe we should extend it to four years at the same rate. I think now is the opportunity to kind of have that dialogue so that, you know, we can present that to, to the board at the April meeting. Um, I also, so this is the current assessment rate. Um, so this very long spreadsheet is developed by uh, the assessing office. We will certainly have a couple of businesses that will have come online. So that's the good news, not a lot, but we know, that, for example, the Walgreens and the Dunkin' Donuts location will come online. So that might add a little bit of funds. Um, so I just kind of wanted to, to share that with anyone. But if someone has shut down and the property owner can prove there's a vacancy there, you know, then in that particular case, there might be a situation where we, we lose a, you know, a little bit of potential revenue in, in that particular address. Um, so I did just kind of want to present this to everyone. I wanted to see uh, really and determine folks' initial thoughts on, you know, what is the thought process of the year for renewal? Is it, do we think that two years is a good time frame? Do you feel like this should be considered at a different time frame? Um, and, you know, in addition to that, I included a, um, a draft of a letter that would go to businesses. So the way that the timeline works, and I'll just scroll up a little bit. Sorry, I feel like I'm scrolling all over the place. The way that the timeline works is for the April 6th meeting, the board will basically vote to approve a special assessment. It could be at the same rate. It could be at a different rate. For our purposes here, I, I wrote same rate. The month of April, and I've already begun working with the um, city assessing office, you know, will work to determine the tax assessment levels for the properties and prepare the tax assessment role because that must be prepared before city council has, you know, um, needs to pass any sort of resolution. Um, I will, staff will make a presentation probably at the April 20th discussion only meeting to council to kind of hype all of the good work that the DMB has done to kind of say, hey, even in the midst of COVID, you know, we've done all of these things, we've partnered on these projects, we've, you know, tried to, for example, you know, we've launched a, a new app, we've, you know, been creative with, you know, businesses hosting artwork, you know, we've, really rebranded. We've partnered on the daytime, nighttime, anytime campaign, things of that nature. And then on April 27th, that would be the date that council would approve the resolution to um, receive and file the special assessment, and they would officially set two public hearings. So we have to go through that entire process, and then the businesses will be notified via two letter correspondences about the public hearings. So I included in the packet the first letter, and then they would also be notified of a, with a second letter so that they have every opportunity to you know, attend the public hearings. Certainly during this time of, time of COVID, we also really highlight public hearings on our web pages. So not only do we share those in press release materials, place those in public notices, we actually have like a, a special annotation for anyone about something that is a public hearing. So we really try to be user-friendly from a virtual perspective so that people understand, you know, when the public hearings would be. 
So the first public hearing would be May 11th. Then the second public hearing would be um, May 25th. And, you know, if there are no major changes, obviously, and city council agrees, then the special assessment would be approved during that May 25th meeting. Uh, per finance, the preferences, they really want this whole process tied up by June 1 so that when the property tax bills go out at the very beginning of July, you know, all of that is reflected in it. Does that make sense to everybody? So that's, that's sort of the proposed timeline. Um, and here is a proposed letter for you. So obviously what's highlighted would change, certainly based upon the property, but I wanted to just kind of share this with you to see if you thought we needed to perhaps add some additional information, if there was any you know, particular verbiage you wanted to see included, um, I just wanted to give you that opportunity. And certainly if you would like a little more time to, you know, to think about it and get staff edits, that's, that's fine as well. Um, I did send all of this, the proposed timeline, the proposed draft letter to the new city attorney's office, just because this would be the first time that we have worked with the new city attorney's office on this process. So I just wanted to make sure early on that if they wanted to see a different process undertaken or any changes that we had time to do that. So the city attorney's office is looking at that and I anticipate that we would receive feedback by around the, um, the first full week of April. So I guess my caveat here is, this is the way we believe this is all gonna happen. Um, but if everybody can just be patient with staff in case the city attorney's office does say to us, well, we need to include this last minute. I just kind of wanna give everybody the, the heads up that that could happen, but we believe it's, a pretty straightforward process um, for the whole. So that was my very long um, discussion about this situation. So I think really two, two kind of major things for feedback. How do we feel about the, the rate of the special assessment? Should it be two years, three years, four years, five years? What do you guys think in terms of a recommendation to the board? And is there anything in particular in this letter that you want to see changed? So I have no problem Two years seems logical. I agree. I agree also. I mean, I can't, we all hope that COVID won't go on forever and the university population will be back soon. But giving them a little bit of like a two year window does give landlords and tenants a little bit of um, knowledge take some of the mystery away. I know it's going to take a minute to recover even after if next year things are totally normal that's like the rebuild that's like mm -hmm. making people um you know have the opportunity to catch up before you know so I have no problem keeping it two years at the same rate do we need to like motion that like I think that that might be appropriate. Maybe it would just be a, a motion for a recommendation to the board um, for consideration of a two-year renewal of the special assessment. Okay, I'll make that motion. I'll second that motion. Okay. And I will do a roll call vote. Crouch. Yes. Frank Hepfer. Yes. Quinn. Yes. Yonkis. Yes. And Houston. Yes. Perfect. The motion passes. Okay. And then how do we feel about sort of this draft letter? Do we feel like it incorporates all of the necessary information? Is there anything else you would like to see in the document? Or I know it's kind of a very governmental ease sort of <laughs> verbiage, but um, I just wanted to see if there was anything in particular you felt was necessary to include in the document. No, it looks good to me. The only other thing, if I was going to add something, would be, you know, where it says in order to provide the funding to develop advertising promotional programs, maybe throw a couple things in there of, you know, this is what you're getting from it. You're getting, you know, we've done, you know, X, Y, Z or this or that or whatever. So people can say, Hey, you know, I'm giving 157 bucks, but where, what are exactly going to downtown management issues or events? What, you know, cause they might not know what events they're, you know, sure. what they're getting out of it. Yeah. So. Like a of the most prominent things that we've done. Mm 
like yeah, the East Lansing e gift card program and yeah, yeah like support you know, of the daytime nighttime anytime project like yeah, that just, yeah you know something like that so they say oh I didn't realize that the you know that that's what it was going towards or doing just so that you know I mean we don't have to list obviously everything that we've sure. ever done but just a couple you know major highlight things that they sure. can say oh cool you know yeah New signage you know. downtown okay yeah so great Anything else? But as far as the rest of the letter, I think it looks great. I think, you know, everything's on there that would need to be there. Great. Okay. All right. Well, we will certainly um, share at the full board meeting the recommendation of the two-year renewal and the board will take official action during the April board meeting. And I will also share this, probably this letter and just make a couple of revisions and make sure that the full board doesn't, you know, have any final changes to that as well. Okay, so Shifting gears to kind of our final discussion item today. Um, so staycation, we have had a couple of discussions about a staycation event concept. So here's what we have done since the last time that we met. First of all, we did send out a survey to downtown businesses kind of asking about what activities um, they might be willing to kind of help support or if they were willing to host something. We didn't receive a ton of feedback. So Gabby is actually in the process of continuing to sort of reach out to them individually. And she might have a couple of updates for us here in a minute. Um, but, you know, we are trying to figure out, you know, creative ways that people could host something. Uh, we were also able to speak to the Marriott about um, future weekends, because obviously we were initially kind of thinking, you know, should we do something in April, but you know, we don't want to rush it. it was kind of, the, I think the sentiment of this group. So um, I was able to talk to the general manager, Eric Sudal, and he said that he would actually honor the discounted rate for Fridays and Saturdays through the whole summer months. Um, it's just that he would not, they're, they're essentially booked for graduation weekend. So aside from graduation weekend, um, he's very excited and happy to try to partner. We also talked to the Wild Goose Inn and the Wild Goose Inn loves the idea and really appreciates it and supports it. But um, the good news is actually to date, um, they only have six rooms, they have limited rooms. They're actually quite booked throughout the spring and summer. So that's, I think that that's good news. So they said, you know, we just don't think we can do it right now, but keep us surprised in the future. We would really love to try to participate. So really, you know, at this point, knowing that, um, you know, unless we decided to, if we decided to do something in May, I think the Marriott would certainly be, you know, our um, one lodging location. I can tell you that um, to date, it sounds like, you know, the new hotel that's going to be opening up in the downtown is not going to open until like the end of June. So just kind of, you know, we're just kind of sharing that and kind of bearing that in mind with everyone. Um, we also had a discussion Oh, sorry, Chanel, do you have a question? On that note, I think it is actually beneficial to do it before the new, I would, I, my vision is not for this to be a one-time thing. I think for the first time for this one, I think it's actually beneficial to have it not, have it be before the other hotel opens, because I think that when that happens, it will drive a lot of business. And um, fortunately for them, um, they haven't had to survive through COVID where the Marriott has. Um, so it's a way for us to drive business to businesses that are, have been, you, does that make sense? You know what I'm saying? Like to give the Marriott the opportunity to get the reservations as they have had to endure this. And then next time um, the new hotel can be a part of it because I, I just feel like if they were a part of it the first time, that's where everybody would go first, right? You know, like, oh, I've never stayed, like I've stayed at the Marriott before, you know, like I, let's go try this new hotel. Let's see what this new thing, we all already know what the Marriott does. So I think it allows the Marriott to kind of um, not get overshadowed by the new hotel if we were to wait. Yeah, I think staff, um, I, I mean, I can say that I think, I personally feel like Eric's been really gracious about this. So yeah, I would I would be comfortable, you know, now that we've reached out to Wild Goose Inn and kind of received some final feedback you know, just kind of 
opening it up so that the Marriott could receive the, the benefit of it. Um, there was also discussion about marketing. Um, and so uh, I'm gonna hand that over to Gabby in just a minute to kind of talk to you about mask stuff as well. Um, and then another idea that Chanel uh, came up with was perhaps during this first time, we could also do some sort of giveaway where if people came down or participated or perhaps in a different ideation, then we would give away a free staycation weekend in the future. So it's an additional draw to the event. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and hand over to Gabby and have her highlight anything she's been working on and then we can talk a little bit more. Hey y'all, so like Amy mentioned, I have been reaching out to some other businesses because we didn't get a whole lot of hits on the Survey Monkey. So I'm calling them, seeing what they can offer as far as maybe an art activity or yoga as we discussed previously. I also contacted Luke this morning from RetroDuck. Um, about doing hashtag staycation EL masks um, with the downtown EL logo. So that would be definitely a marketing source for us if we can get them in soon. Um, as Chanel mentioned also, we are kind of considering the incentive for people to enter and then they would get an additional weekend. So yeah, I'm open to discussion about what else we want to explore for this. Um. So I can elaborate. What I was thinking like with the giveaway was, oh, sorry, um, was <laughs> to kind of have it be like a one of the marketing tools. Like if you enter, um, you have to go take this and talk to your dad. Um, then you could win like a vacation. And then the way you would enter would be marketing that on your own social media as a way to get it out to other people before it happens. Like we'll pick one winner from these people that enter on social media. And then the way they enter is through posting on their social media and advertising it so that it's kind of like a two for one. So instead of spending the advertising dollars necessarily on ads, which can be effective, and cannot be effective word of mouth advertising and give like free advertise it like free giveaway stuff people always want to participate in that so you're going to get more clicks and more shares of it um if people get a possible benefit for doing it and so that way instead of spending like two hundred dollars on advertising facebook ads we can spend the two hundred dollars or whatever i don't remember what the cost of the hotel room is but spend that um on a giveaway. Yeah, the cost of the hotel is 129 a night, just so everybody's aware that's the new discounted rate. So I guess at this point, um, you know, the other thing that we had talked about was to maybe try to host some, some sort of attraction events that, you know, we know that we have daytime, nighttime, anytime stuff going on. Um, but, you know, to kind of also hone in on, you know, what other particular things could the DMV host that would be COVID safe, but, you know, kind of attractive. Um, Gabby has been working really hard on um, a scavenger hunt component. And so we think that that's certainly something that we could put, pull together, you know, in the next couple of weeks to have happen. Um, I think for our purposes right now, you know, we kind of like to, to try to talk out what weekend might make the most sense to try to launch this. Um, one idea that staff had was maybe Mother's Day weekend. Um, we have some split thoughts on that. Like, I just don't know if moms would necessarily want to be, a, maybe they would, maybe they'd be like, I'm out. <laughs> but, um, you know, but I, you know, I think that uh, that is the last weekend of the market. So just so everybody knows that that's the last weekend of the downtown Yale you know, underground market. Certainly there are other things that are going to, you know, come in the future. So well, certainly there are other things that are going to happen. That would be, um, I believe it's the 8th and the 9th of May. So well, the weekend after graduation, is that accurate? Right, that's yep. correct. And so maybe we wanna do a little bit later too. You know, maybe this group feels like, no, let's do it later in May or let's do it in June. I think that is a good idea for a weekend too because um, that it tends to be the weekend after graduation tends to be one of the slowest weeks of the summer um, for businesses because students that are taking summer classes oftentimes go home because they get a very short break in between um, spring term and summer term that they tend to go home that weekend. Um, and then school starts the next week. 
generally, I don't, I haven't looked at the academic calendar, but typically that's how it is. They get a week off before summer classes. And so that would be a good time to also, you know, to help the businesses on what would normally be one of the slower weekends of the summer. Um, and then that could give us all of April to advertise it. That's also what we thought. Yeah, we recommended sometime in May. That was gonna be our initial recommendation. I mean, if we, did the two, if we did two weekends, if we did Mother's Day weekend and the weekend after, I think you're gonna be split on moms. Some, I would say, actually, I would argue that maybe more than 50% of moms would have no problem taking the weekend off. Yeah, I, we were, yeah. <laughs> A lot of my friends that are moms are like, can, is your husband watching your kids? Like, are we going to brunch? Like, what are we, you know? Um, so I think that that is kind of becoming, especially with COVID and sitting in your house with your kids, like I, I know my kids really well lately. Um, <laughs> so I don't think that that would necessarily be a deterrent and it might be something fun that then husbands could plan for their wives or whatever. Yeah, I mean, you could, you could advertise it that way too, as a gift yeah. or, a, you know, like a idea gift or something. Way. Yeah. Like, yeah. you know, like, oh, you know, cause I always kind of want my husband to plan it for me instead of me being like this is what he's always like what do you want I'm like you fit you do something nice this is on you <laughs> and so that gives them a really easy thing to say like look I planned a weekend and whatever so I, I don't I'm not opposed to doing Mother's Day and then we could potentially do it two weeks Mother's Day and then the weekend after to keep it simple other thoughts committee members no, yeah, I mean, I think that makes sense. And we like, we think consecutive weekends, is that what we, because we think that that will just draw more attention to it, like easier yeah, to market. Less confusing. Okay. So people can just remember like back-to-back -back weekends rather than, was it the third May and then the first week, like that gets confusing. If you can just say like the first, whatever, Mother's Day weekend and the weekend after, like it makes it really um, easy to communicate. So perhaps, so May 7th and 8th. And the other thing I was thinking about Mother's Day was, you know, if we went away, like I'm a mom, so I'll use myself as an example. So if I went away Friday and Saturday, I'd still be back Sunday, right? I could still go to the underground market and then be home, you know, for Sunday afternoon, whatever. I'm sure my husband will still have something waiting for me, right? <laughs> Some sort of craft my child has done. So, okay. Okay. Well, if that is sort of the proposal, then I think that um, what we'll do is as staff, we will get back uh, together with Eric at the Marriott, just make sure that we understand all of the terms, work with Luke on, you know, creating the masks, um, try to come up with some creative marketing, maybe work with our graphic designer now, because I think, is everybody sort of on board to, we'll say, certainly the first weekend we can be like, hey, planning a special getaway, you know, for your wife, and I guess, I think the other good thing here is that if, if moms don't want to be gone that first weekend, but are like, I have no problem being gone the next weekend, you know, it could be a, leading up to kind of, kind of gift, so, okay. Um, are there any specific activities you really want staff to try to incorporate? Um, we're really gonna try hard, you know, to obviously play off of anything that's daytime, nighttime, anytime, anything that's existing, but. Um, if you're gonna do it on Mother's Day, it might be kind of fun to have, um, like if the whole family's going to stay at the Marriott, is there a kid's crafting activity? So you could drop the kids off and then you could go out to dinner and then all meet up at the hotel later. It's a great idea. Can we make sure that kind of the wording of this isn't like super, super gendered? Yes. Also, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I, I, like yeah. spouse instead of wife. Mother partner or something yes yep thank you do we still want to tie it back to mother's day are we okay with that but we'll just be careful about the pronouns like spouse okay significant other things and i don't think it has to just be geared towards mother's day anyway i think the whole idea is staycation and then it's also on mother's day so if you're a mother you can go relax too you know, like, right. It's going to be the main theme is like a staycation in East Lansing, the perfect gift for Mother's Day, you know, that type of thing, type of um, framing, not that this is for mothers only, right? I don't want it to feel like it's only a Mother's Day staycation. So 
it's a staycation and it happens to be on Mother's Day. So if you're a mom, enjoy. If you're not, enjoy. <laughs> Yeah, like the perfect get, gift to get away or something like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And yes, Sarah, I like the idea of craft stuff. And I'm also wondering if um, the market, you know, my, I bet the market's going to have something fun too for kids. Yeah, that would be a good place for that. Um, in terms of advertising, um, do we want to do like, are we gonna, I mean, we can approve here $500 towards this. You Is can that, approve up to $500 per item. So uh, conceivably you could say, we want to expend up to, let's say, you know, and you, and you have expended up to five, you have approved already up to $500 and staff has not spent any funds yet. Um, however, we do have um, quotes for the masks. And at this point, I think that we assume the mask would probably cost us if we bought like 70 some masks, right? Initially, um, I think that we figured that the mask would cost us um, about $200. So that's just kind of something to, to bear in mind. So, and Gabby, help me. Were there any additional costs we were thinking about at that point? What was that? I had in mind um, if we wanted to provide like a incentive for a free weekend that that's was right that was going to be about 258 dollars like i don't know if, what you know if eric will well he, i don't think he could really charge his taxes but that's right so if you figure the 129 times two thank you gabby and then the 200 dollars in masks you know that brings us to a little bit under 500 dollars. i think then, in, in the giveaway i think we need to include like a gift card for like 50 dollars or something okay okay you know like make it like a yep. deep $300 value or some, some, you know, something like that. Um, so like a staycation weekend and it, we, we advertise it as like, you know, two nights, give a, two nights away at the Marriott plus a whatever gift card. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And so, uh, Chanel, we were asking about advertising. So were you thinking like we spent a couple hundred dollars on like social media ads? Is that what you were thinking? Um, or I print really ad? Should, I mean, I think we should advertise it on our social. I don't think we should put a lot of dollars and cents behind the specific ads on social media. I think we really should put, I mean, we can always change this, right? We can always like add to our advertising budget if it's not, if people aren't. But I think we should try the organic um giveaway advertising and see how far that gets us. Um, I mean, I don't mind doing some, I just don't want to throw like a huge ad budget when we're going to be doing the giveaway, which I think will be more effective anyway. Uh, so that, I don't know. So do you want to prove something now or just kind of hold off? Like, do you want to say like up to $200 in advertising? Yeah. I don't have a problem. Yeah, if we don't have to use it. Like we can just approve it. And if you guys deem that it's not like, cause you can track the giveaway numbers. You'll be able to see who's entering it, how far the reach is going. Um, if it's going viral in the community, whatever, if it is, then we probably don't need to spend the money. If it's not, and we can spend some money up front to advertise the giveaway. Right. And that's how I would do it. I would advertise the giveaway, not necessarily, which advertise the weekend, but advertise the giveaway up front and then save some of the marketing dollars for the back end If it's not, effective. Okay. I see. So we'll advertise the weekend, obviously we'll, we'll get the masks and then we'll kind of see where we're at. Okay. I think the giveaway should be something along the lines of like, we post on Facebook and Instagram and whatever, and then they have to like share it on their page and tag like three, five, whatever, how, three friends, I think is pretty standard um, in a giveaway. And then like, write what comment on our post because comments um, help the algorithms. So require them to reshare the post, re tag three friends in either the reshare or comment. I don't know if it matters. And then to comment on it, what they would want to do you know, like what they would most look forward to doing in East Lansing on that weekend so that that helps it in um, 
the social media algorithms get spread out. It was what I was right. saying. I don't know if there's other input on that. Yeah, I think definitely all that you put out there, also the hashtag, I think we should yeah. really push because that helps the algorithm and it'll be on masks um, that we got. So definitely yeah. something to add to that. I like the tagging three friends maybe a picture of who would attend um, and what you'd like to do. That's a, I like that. And so with the, with the hashtag, I'm just wondering, so like with the most recent social media competitions, we've had people tag, right? Like the downtown EL Facebook page as well, or Twitter or Instagram. Should we make that? Do, do you know what I'm saying? Is that like, so I want to make it as easy as possible, but. I think if they're resharing our post, we're okay. We will automatically get that notification anyway. Okay. That's my question. I just want to make sure that we're not going to miss one and then walk ourselves in. And if they're using the hashtag, then we're able to track it by the hashtag alone. Okay. okay. So reshare on their page, take three friends, use the hashtag staycation EL. They have to comment on our post what they would want to do okay. on their weekend, okay. like what they okay. most like to be looking forward to. Okay. Does anybody have any input on this? I'm going to stand up real quick. I'm still listening though. Have we had any issues with, um, with seeing who's shared it with privacy settings in the past or has it been fine? I'm sorry. Can you ask that again, Audrey? Have we had any problems with with the privacy settings, seeing if people actually shared the post, has that been an issue in the past? Have we? So I can speak to for the TikTok challenges lately, because we make them tag us, because we make them tag the downtown EL page, I have not been aware of any problems. I do know, like in the past, I think we were just concerned that we weren't seeing, you know what I mean, some stuff on Facebook. So that's why I, I just kind of keep going back to this. I think we should make them tag, you know tag us in some capacity okay yeah I mean it's fine I was just curious yeah I think it's something we should definitely mention if they are to enter though because I know when we talked about TikTok you can make each clip pr private or public and I know your account has to be on Instagram or Facebook so I think we should probably mention like make your account public or I don't think tagging alone would allow us to see the post if we're not following oh, really? Okay. So make your account public kind of thing. That would be yeah. for Instagram, for Facebook, if they tag you because we're a business location, you can see all of, um, because we're not a person, um, it, uh, you can see that stuff at, on Facebook, but on Instagram, you have to have a public, I think it's just easy to say if um, you might, you must have a public profile to enter. Yeah. yeah. Public profile to enter. Got it. And on Facebook, and, it's really easy to change each individual post settings. They've changed it so that like they don't have to make their Facebook like wide open. They just change the setting on that to show as a public post. Okay. So the that works on Facebook and Instagram. What about Twitter? Do we know? The other I don't thing I've seen just recently was um, someone just asked them to screenshot the post and then send it to them just like proof of it if they had a private profile yeah but I don't want it I want it to be a public profile I think I don't have a problem requiring people to do that for a temporary period of time because I want people to see it like if they limit the audience and because you can do that on posts is you can like even if you have a like I just right. I think that having it be a public like if people want to enter they can if they don't want their profile to be public they don't have to end you know like mm -hmm. I think the whole point of it is to garner marketing advertisement so to say you have to have a public profile means that it'll get out to other people then you know what if they only have five followers like that's not going to help us really um yeah so I don't know on Twitter I I'm not super I'm not like a Twitter person so I'm not exactly sure how giveaways have worked on Twitter um, I don't even think, I think we maybe put we it on Twitter. What? I think Facebook would be our ideal spot. Facebook and Instagram or just Facebook? I would do I both just and Instagram.
And you can do like bonus entries if you share it on your Facebook and your Instagram, that'll get you an extra entry. Because that'll be on there twice. You know what I'm saying? It won't, we won't take, we're not gonna go through and sync profiles to see if somebody entered on Facebook and Instagram to say that was only one entry. So if you advertise like bonus entry, if you post on both, cause we're not gonna go through that anyway and weed that out. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. I think this certainly gives us a lot to get started with. We will absolutely keep you updated. Um, I'll touch base with Adam, you know, about daytime, nighttime, many time stuff and, you know, make sure that we're trying to highlight as much as possible with event activities. Um, and I know that Gabby is corralling businesses to try to participate. So we'll get as many as we can to agree to host some activities. So. Okay. So those are my major discussion items for today. Does anybody have anything else they want to say? Okay. Nothing, everybody's good. All right, I will motion to adjourn the meeting. I will second that. All right. Quiz. I will do a roll call vote. Crouch. Yes. Frank Heffer. Yes. Quinn. Yes. Yonkis. Yes. Houston. Yes. Okay, the motion passes. Thank you everyone very much. Um, you have a week off and then we will see everyone back on April 6th for the board meeting. So. Thank you. Thanks all, have a great Friday. Thanks. Have a great day.